cab's all set up to do our rust repair, but what we're going to be doing our rust repair on first is our doors, not our cab. Now the reason that we're going to be doing this is that if you make the mistake down here and you get this a little bit up or a little bit down, we'll be able to compensate for that when you put on your rocker panels. So if you had this about an eighth of an inch down and you accidentally put your rocker panels about an eighth of an inch up, you'd be kind of screwed. So uh, first thing I'm going to be doing is uh, just kind of prepping this door and uh, seeing how bad the rust is and then um, getting the new patch panel on top. So, okay, so right here I've got a lot of bubbling rust and I want to grind that down flat so when I put my piece on top of here it's also laying down flat and even. So I've looked inside the door to make sure there weren't any dents or damage down here that I might want to take care of at the same time. The patch panel that you can get is uh, relatively large, so if I've got problems up in this area, I'm going to go ahead and take my patch panel that high. But if I don't, I'm going to keep it low. I want to keep as much of the original door as possible. So we're going to probably only be doing a piece about the size of this. Also, when I'm deciding where to cut this out, I like to keep this if I can because it's sometimes difficult to get lined back up. And I also have to keep in mind where I'm going to be doing my hammering and dolly. So you don't want to do it right up on this edge right here because it'll be difficult to do the hammering and dolly. I either want to come a couple inches down or I'll have to go right, a couple of inches up. This, what I'm going to be doing is going a couple of inch or two above the rust and I'm not going to take it straight across. I'm going to take it at a little bit of an angle. Now the reason that we do that is if you go straight across right here, it kind of have a, has a tendency to just kind of dunk in or dunk out. But if you do it at an angle, it um, somehow uh, takes the stress and um, evens it out across the board or whatever, but it's a lot easier to do at an angle. Now in order to maintain our bottom down here, we're going to do like we did on the cab and we'll just measure up 12 inches or as far as we need to so we keep our bottom down here straight. Okay, so another trick I like to do is I'll take a cardboard piece and I'll stick it up against the side here. And I'll lay out. And then I'll simply trace this right on out. Uh, now, on a small patch panel, this may not necessarily be that necessary, but when you get a large patch panel and you're going to be doing the inside and the outside, it's real easy to get this to go in or out uh, an eighth or a quarter of an inch by accident. So this will help you keep it uh, a little bit more Before you start cutting this baby up, make sure that you've got the uh, right side of the right door. Also, I usually do the right side of anything first. The reason we're doing that is that if we jerk it up a little bit, it won't piss us off every time we get into the driver's side door. So the passenger side, we don't see as much, so we'll do that side first. If we get any mistakes, it'll be Okay, so I know my door is going to be three and a half inches here, four inches here, four and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is go up just a little bit of that. I'm going to go about four and five on this here. I'll take some tape and uh, it'll make it easier to follow the line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, new shoulder piece here, snug it up against the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the edge here away, right to the point that I need it, so I can take this and I can slide it right on. Okay, so our new piece is on here, and it's butted up against the bottom of the door, but we actually need to have it come up just a little bit more so that it's uh, even. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind off about a, uh, just the thickness of the metal here, sixteenth of an inch or so, off the bottom of the door so it's a little bit more accurate. When I'm grinding this down here and here, if I grind it just to the point to where it splits like this, that's typically the right spot. So I know I've got my new piece exactly where I want it, so what I'm going to actually do is tack weld this down and uh, so that it doesn't move around on me when I'm cutting it. Okay, so a lot of times when you see guys doing this, they'll take the both pieces and they'll cut both pieces at the same time. And that's a good way to do it and all, but uh, this way here, it's a little bit easier and uh, a little more accurate. You can just gently pry off the old piece. Ok, 
Okay, so now our outside uh, situation is all set up basically. So now we will work on the inside. Okay, so right here is the edge of the um, outer piece where it's being cut right here. So what I'm going to do is actually go up to about right here or so and then I'll cut out this section um, even though the rest of it's not too bad it's just our corners down here and a little bit in here technically speaking we could probably get away with a smaller piece but uh, if we go up a little bit higher then we'll be able to take care of some of that radio speaker hole too at the same time Right, our inside piece is, uh, because of the multiple contours and everything like that, it's a little bit stiffer than the outside piece. We don't have to worry about warping and stuff as much. Uh, so you can cut this at a diagonal or you can just uh, keep it straight. It's not that big of a deal. Well, I'm always looking to try new things, so uh, I think what I'm going to try is simply cutting a section of this here out so that we'll be able to get it better on end. Alright, so this new way works uh, a little bit better. I can get it up nice and neat, and so now when I do my overlay of cut, it'll be a little bit more accurate there. So you can see right here, I've just cut away just part of the door and uh, just take these little babies off right here and now I can slide it up more. Okay, so the inside of the door is pretty clean but we'll still get up there with a wire wheel and then we'll get a little bit of rust mort and shoot it up in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some rust mort and uh, shoot it up all inside the doors. I want to make sure that I flip the door on the sides because I want the rust mort to get up into these um, the overlapping metal on the edges. And a couple things you want to keep in mind about this stuff is that it'll eat your clothes and it'll ruin your pants and it'll screw up your floor and it hurts too. So uh, you better wear a mask if you want to keep your lungs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry up. I'm going to let it dry as long as possible, uh, a day or two if I have it. And uh, then when this gets all dried up, I'll paint the inside and then I'll go ahead and finish off our patch panels. For the interest of uh, time and all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to finish it up today. But another thing you want to keep in mind about the rush mort is that it'll screw up your paint job quicker than liquidy split. So don't think you're going to be doing the rust mort, spraying it on here, and then painting it in a week or two. If you're going to be shooting the rust mort on it, you want to make sure that it has a lot of time. The, the major problem that you have is where you've got the overlaps of metal, where the uh, inside and outside doors overlap. The moisture can stay in there, and uh, after you're painted it, it'll kind of come up and fester and make the uh, paint flake off. So only do the rust mort bit if you've got a long time for it to dry. I didn't attempt to try to cut this whole thing in one shot, um, but I did scribe with my uh, cutting wheel and all the top part here is cut out, but on your edges you need to be a little bit more ginger. Towards the front of the door you have this brace right here that you have to keep in mind of, and you have a little one down here too at the bottom. So when you're cutting and everything like that, make sure that you don't cut through this and you also need to um, cut off the spot welds that will be on here. Sometimes you can see these and you can get your spot weld cutter and cut them out, but a lot of times over the years the rust is built up and they just kind of disappear. So you kind of have to go looking for them the hard way and then cut everything off. You can see that I've cut this piece off nice and ginger-like and then I'm able to cut off the spot welds here and then just gently move that out. On the other side here, I did the same thing. Uh, usually it's best to get a Dremel tool and cut into these little nooks and crannies right here. I just uh, didn't have one today, so I had to do it the hard way and just cut all up. It's not that big of a deal, you just weld it up, but uh, a little Dremel cutting wheel will do this a little bit neater for you pieces right here on the edge, they come a little bit over, so we'll need to center this, see how much over we are, and then trim it down. 
Mark the outside of the door. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go in about mm, eighth of an inch or so. Okay, we can see that uh, this slides right up into here, so that makes it all easier to line up. Same thing on this side, but we do have the hole that's going to be missing now, so we'll just get a magic marker from the inside, mark where the hole is, drill that baby out now. And just like the sides run over, the bottom runs over too, so what we'll need to do is get the patch panel up here, see how much we need to trim off the bottom. Remember, always trim nice and easy, metal doesn't grow back. Now I'm just trial fitting everything, make sure everything uh, looks like it's fitting pretty good and uh, it's looking all right. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to start on the outside. We're not going to do our inside first. Well, we're actually going to start doing some welding now. Um, to help us with that, we've got this cool little tool. You can see that. Looks kind of like that there. So you see that slips out there. And we've got the wing nut on top. So we uh, put our two pieces of metal together, bunch it up, and then we simply tighten it. And it's all good. Everything's lined up nice and neat. Then we weld, take it back out. All right, everything's lined up. Everything's measuring good. Everything's looking good. Let me uh, show you so what we got. I'm even right here. Everything's clamped up nice and neat, nice and even right here. So now I can go ahead and start putting some tack welds what on. What I'm doing my tack welds, I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to work my way out. The reason that we're doing that is that, let's say for instance, we were starting at our ends and we were working our way in and there was a little bit of uh, wrinkle in there or excess metal. So if you started on your ends, then when you got to the middle, it would be trapped in there. So this way, if there's any wrinkles or anything like that, we'll work them out towards the edge. Okay, so you can see my tack welds. When I do my tack welds, I go about four inches apart. You'll notice the wide gap right here. That's where we had our um, clamp. If you put welds too close to the clamp, you saw how difficult it was to take them out in the first place. If you have the welds even closer, then the metal shrinks and it makes it real difficult to get that clamp okay, off. So we got uh, our patch panel on here welded up a little bit. So we're going to get the dolly underneath and we're going to hammer right on top of the weld. Metal is going to shrink when we weld it. It will expand when we hammer it. Now we're not hammering the hell out of this. We're just getting some nice light caps on all of it. Okay, so after I get some tack welds down, what I'll do is I'll go to a grinder with a nice large wheel on it like this. Uh, the reason we use this versus our smaller wheels is that the larger wheel, when we're grinding, it'll show up our high-low spots a little bit easier uh, and we can correct them before they're welded into place. You always want to constantly check to make sure this is nice and straight. And you want to uh, always take out all the dents, dings, and uneven pieces right away. Because once you get it welded in, it's a lot more difficult to take it out. Okay, so you can see that uh, you just keep welding, keep welding. But we're not going to weld right here. Um, and right here on the edge. We have to wait until we roll this over. So make sure you give about a half an inch to both sides here. Okay, so we're almost done now. What I'm going to do now is take a little bit of black paint and put a light fall coat on this. And then I'm going to get a block sander and block sander just to look for any last high low spots. Okay, so now our outside's all done, nice and neat pretty much. Uh, so now we'll flip it around and we'll start with the bottom one.